Thank you for joining us today, all of you here and everyone from around the world. Thank you for coming. Today, I will continue with our topic of the science of becoming oneself or the process of becoming oneself. And it will be number six, emotional purity. Emotional purity is very important if we want to have universal consciousness. Very, very important. So we are going to talk about that. And as I talk about the different parts of it, we will stop and do little mini exercises just to give you a flavor of what's awaiting you if you want to heal your emotional body. And I think we all do, don't we? I hope you say yes. <laughs> and if you're already healed, of course, you want to go even higher than the normal emotional body. Whenever you find yourself in turmoil, emotional turmoil, you need to stop and take notice. Okay? Don't ignore it. Emotions are powerful. They're fast, they're fiery, and they will affect every part of your life. Nothing will go unscathed once your emotions are inflamed. Esoteric students sometimes think that they can intellectualize the emotions. They can just wish them away because they don't really exist. Well, they do. If they have an effect on you, they exist. If you can heal your emotions, uplift yourself to the intuitional level, then the emotional body uh, in its normal condition no longer exists, something else exists in its place. So you cannot deny it, you cannot offer uh, clever arguments about it, you can't intellectualize it, you can't ignore it. You have to understand <coughs> it and you have to put it into perspective of your entire life. Okay, so that's the first lesson. So if you find yourself stressed, this is like those commercials, are you finding yourself stressed, overwhelmed? anxious over things, <laughs> see that your actions, your reactions to life and issues are a little bit over the top? Are you blaming yourself and others over everything that's going wrong in your life? Are you unable to stay balanced, joyful, hopeful, full of faith and optimism? You say, oh, how can I even do that? Well, we're supposed to. Are you unusually negative sometimes? saying nasty things under your breath. If you're socially conscious, you might not say it out loud, but you feel it, you think it. Are you a little bit too bossy and touchy? Are you in turbulent waves of emotions? If you are, welcome to the emotional sea, the turbulent sea of emotions. Don't ignore these signals. They are very important, and we need to deal with them and become healthy, balanced, so that our optimism, our faith, our joy can express itself in our everyday life. Truly, this is possible. I've seen it happen. Now, for ordinary people, these emotional outbursts are just part of life. They'll say, it's because I'm Italian, I'm Armenian, I'm whatever, you know, I'm, I'm redheaded, whatever, I can, I can do this. It's not true. For ordinary people, it's just part of life, and they just go with it. They feel upset, their digestion doesn't work, whatever and they just think it's part of life. For disciples, that is not the case. We are asked to become disciples, healed, uplifted. Why? Because we become leaders. Leadership is not being in charge of a corporation or a group or having a bunch of people follow you. We can lead every minute of our life by our example. This is very needed now. True leadership is needed now more than ever before so that we can exemplify the higher values that we learn in the teaching. We need to show how these things are possible in our everyday life by being that. So when we are in an emotional turmoil, we cannot be good examples. We cannot translate things right. We cannot show faith and optimism in the teaching. How can we? People will say, if that's how you feel and you've been studying the teaching for 20, 30, 40 years, then what chance is there for me? Do you see? It's a heavy responsibility when we assume discipleship. We have to be able to be dedicated, healed, and patient disciples. We have to have historical perspective, both this life and many lifetimes. We need to be able to have our inner emotions be uplifted so that they are a clean, clear mirror of divine love. 
divine love in everything that we do. Is it possible? Absolutely. That's our path. When we heal our emotions, a shift in consciousness happens in our life. Things will happen that will make us feel bad. Things will make us feel sad and aggrieved. That's fine. That's the human part, that you do feel it. But the uplifted discipleship part is when we don't let it get us down. That we know how to work through it, deal through it. As long as we are living in a physical, excuse me, physical, emotional, and mental life, we are susceptible to the feelings of everything around us, to the seen and unseen world. But it doesn't mean we give in to it, we succumb to it. So when we see that we are healed emotionally, our self-esteem will increase. That's so important. We will truly begin to see ourselves as souls. We'll say, wow, that thing happened, and I was able to maintain my balance and my optimism. Or it got me down for just a day, and I was able to bounce back from it. Or I was able to handle it in a very constructive way. You see? So your self-esteem grows on top of each other. It's exponential. Your relationships will improve because you'll have this long view patience. You will see how you went through different emotional turbulences in your life and you allow that process for others around you. You see, the first thing that happens sometimes with people is as soon as they get religion or spirituality or an insight about something, they immediately want everybody else to have the same. And they get very impatient with people around them, with politics, with pundits, with their spouses or loved ones or children. All of a sudden, everybody has to have the same enlightenment that they do. Do You see, that's not having historical perspective. So as disciples, we are growing in historical perspective. We have respect for the process that we went through and we respect the process of other people. Hence, we will have better work and group relationships. With our patience and our love, we wait for each flower to bloom. Our world view will change. Our world view will change. See, there's a lot wrong going on, but there's a lot of right going on, too. We will have physical, mental health. When we're emotionally turbulent, you will notice that your digestion doesn't work well. Your skin conditions may erupt. Your breathing will become shallow. Blood pressure may go up. Cholesterol may go up. All kinds of stressful anxiety disorders start coming into your life. So when we have our emotions healed and balanced, we will have better, better health, won't we? So these are reasons why you want to re really pay attention to your emotion. Science of Becoming Oneself, page 71, is a beautiful quote. The intention of purifying our emotional body is not to teach you to fight against negative emotions. Okay, We're not fighting against negative emotions. How can you? They're fluid, and you can't even grasp a hold of them but to help you learn to create conditions in which the birth of negative emotions will be an impossibility. Okay? Life will not get a rise out of you. You'll stay serene and calm and faithful because you will have developed that inner link that links you to the higher consciousness. Is it possible? Yes. Absolutely. This is Gita Seridarian, and I would like to thank you for your interest in this video lecture. We have books, booklets, and spiritual study courses on this very topic. Please visit us at tsgfoundation.org for more information on all TSG Foundation products and services. Thank you.